Aloha beautiful, great to have you back. Don't miss out on any episode. Follow me on Facebook where you will receive additional information. Just look for Tita May. And for now, I wish you lots of new inspiration. Aloha sweet ones and welcome to today's episode of I Am Aloha. Today is a very special day for me. Um, the new month has started and I have... Uh, a small announcement to make and um, basically it's because I believe that with all the changes that are happening I'd like to share the changes that I'm going through to maybe inspire you or give you motivation to make your own changes in your life so basically how do I start <laughs> Um, you know, or some of you may know that right now I'm situated in Germany and uh, it's been my home base for the past 20 years. Um, I was born and raised the first seven years of my life in Ecuador, was then in Germany five years before I went to Nicaragua for five more years over there and spent one year in Costa Rica and then... I came back 20 years ago to Germany. So um, for me, the big change that was happening is on one hand, I was born into a family. I would even say that those were like some sort of nomads, basically, because even my dad and my mom, if I see their backstories, like before they even met each other, they were already moving around a lot from places. I mean, not a lot, a lot, but you know, like every couple of years uh, because my grandfathers needed a new job or something like that. So they knew what it meant to move around. So when they got together and had their own family and had to move around a couple of times, it wasn't such a big deal. But for me, the interesting thing is that, and even with my sister speaking, we realized that we, we moved to Germany um, it was me first and then four years later it was my sister who followed me and then basically we stayed ever since in the same city and for both of us it was important because somehow we needed a place to like ground ourselves to find ourselves and um, somehow to actually have roots somehow we needed that both of us um, I don't know how my sister is, so I'm going to just stay with my story. So for me, it was it felt like if I look back into the 20 years, when I came back, I had this idea of just coming here, studying, and then f starting to work for an NGO somewhere else. And like some of my colleagues, actually, some of the people that went to school with me actually did. And But somehow, I don't know why, it didn't work out for me. I just stayed here, had my job here, and somehow I got sucked into staying in a 9-to-5 job. Um, changing every couple of years because I would get bored really easy. And after I changed again into a different job, and after a year I was already bored of the job as well and was starting to look for alter alternatives, I decided I need to stop here stay in this job until I know what my calling is. So that's how I started to um, look into my spiritual path because I figured maybe my spiritual path will show me where my calling is. If I'm talking like that I was sucked into the system, I'm not talking bad at anyone and I'm not blaming anyone. I want you to understand that very clearly because for me, I, I'm telling you how it felt for me, but in truth, I know it was me who made the decision to stay here. It was me who made the decision to be sucked into that because I wanted so badly to fit in. And that made me do stuff that wasn't something I wanted to do. So I was going from one job to another and didn't really know what would be mine. So I decided to really like stop um, 
uh, start walking on my spiritual path. That's when I start because I had already read a couple of spiritual books and books about, you know, Vika and um, the Celtic culture um, of witches and druids from back then, and how to live with the uh, with the whole um, seasons of the year, you know. But I never had a teacher because I was back then kind of uh, picky or I would say not very trusting. And then I and then I had I, I asked the universe, I said, I'm ready. I want to meet my teacher. And this happened like this was like 10 years ago, because 10 years ago, I realized I, I moved here. I got into this whole system and I'm not happy about it. And I feel like I didn't do one thing of all the things that I dreamt when I came to Germany. So that's when I asked the spirit world to send me my teacher. And it, I back then things, manifesting things took a while. And I think like, because now I realize nowadays and, the, and that has changed ever since 2012, that manifestations work way faster than they used to. But back then it took me about a year until I finally met the man that actually changed my life because he gave me my basic first tools um, in the shaman world. He was a shaman and he taught me all he knew about shamanism and all the methods and working with the drums and working with energy and, you know, really like the whole deal. And um, I'm very thankful to him because he, he always said, there's so many different kinds of spiritual paths that you can take on and you're going to be, um, you have a spiritual path, but don't let anyone tell you which of those paths, paths it is. And this is something because I'm not sure in the English speaking world how it is, but this is something that I, back then I realized here in Germany that a lot of people were like, if you were a Reiki person, then you would only do Reiki and that would be like the only thing you would do. And if you're a shaman, you would do only shaman things. And so that's why my teacher basically told me, your way is a spiritual one and whatever you do, and even if you learn more than one thing, and even he went with me to different kinds of teachers so that he would learn as well, because he said basically everything is just a technique that brings you to your goal. And you just find out which techniques are the ones that fit you best. And don't let anyone tell you that you only have this or this. You can do everything. So that's how he gave me my base. And that's the base I actually live by with all my spiritual things. There's a lot of people. I used to be uh, involved with some people, um, spiritism, doing, I learned for, uh, a couple of things from Santeria people. I learned Zen philosophy, Shiatsu massage. I, I learned um, to do uh, Reiki as well and healing magnetism healing with your hands through healing magnetism and those are really all beautiful techniques and that's a base that my shamanic te teacher gave me um, but in the normal world I would say in the parallel world where I had a job a nine-to-five job and I wasn't very happy about it and um, I got the I got the opportunity to change from a normal position to a very high position with a lot more responsibility, but also a lot more money. But the money didn't didn't get any better. Well, I did get more money, but I did spend a lot more money because I started um, doing, how do you call those things? <sighs> when you're not really um, happy with yourself and then you start shopping. You know, like to make yourself feel better and you start shopping and shopping and shopping. And then by the end of the month, you still don't have much money, even though I was earning more. So um, and that's what actually happened with that position that really m dropped me into uh, a depression. It had the symptoms of a burnout, but um it wasn't, but I'll tell you more later. But at that point, that was like 2012, I was really in uh, in this uh, burnout depression, I would say. And, um, 
in that point, I was learning shiatsu massage, and I was uh, my teachers there were helping me on an energetic level, and the Chinese doctor was trying to give me um, herbs to help me, and it did it did, it did help me, but um, it didn't change much of the situation itself. So what happened was that internally in the in the company I was working with, I changed jobs to not have a job with that much responsibility, and it. At first, it felt like it was changing something, like just being out of the system I was in helped a little bit. But I realized after a couple of months that the symptoms were coming back. I was being like really sad and unmotivated, in a bad mood, like getting stressed pretty fast with a lot of things. So I decided because I was watching myself on my, spir my spiritual side and I didn't see much being wrong about that it just wouldn't help me with my thoughts because somehow my thoughts kept coming in and my thoughts felt really really 3d like you know like my thoughts for me are something completely separated to my beaming to my soul so at that point, the Hawaiian philosophy came into my life on one hand. And on the other hand, I decided like if I want to change my thoughts, I need real therapy. So I went into therapy and my therapist later told me that the thing is I didn't have a burnout. I had a bore out, which means I didn't see the things um, I <clears throat> or how would you say I, I it's not that I didn't see I didn't see the meaning of things. So for me, my job was meaningless. I needed to find something that had meaning for myself. So I started to do stuff like that. I reduced my hours. And suddenly, even though I had my hours reduced, I still had money at the end of the month. You see, <laughs> I wasn't doing like happy shopping anymore that much because I was filling my time with more happy things. And on the other hand, I learned the Hawaiian philosophy, the Huna philosophy, and that actually brought me out of this um, victim role, role of a victim I was in, and gave me the power to change my life for myself. So with the, the thing is, my therapist showed me where my problems were, and then I used shamanism, I used special kinds of meditation, I used the Hawaiian philosophy and Hawaiian ho'oponopono and things like that to pull myself out. And then my path went on, and the thing is, um, following all those things that I had that had to happen to me, the two things that I learned from this therapy and from my bore out, which I'm very thankful to because it showed me what was wrong with me, and now I know what was wrong was that I wasn't accepting myself, I wasn't letting myself be me. I was so concentrated on what everyone else wanted me to be that I wasn't myself. And the other thing is also, some of you might know, I'm Ecuadorian, half German and Chinese. Or not half half, but you know what I mean. So those three cultures really, they, they don't just run through my blood. Those three cultures are set inside of me because my parents, in one way or another, they transmitted those things to me. And I wasn't accepting all that. I felt bad. Like on a subconscious level, I felt bad for having all those things and not being like everyone else just with one or two um, cultures inside of me. And allowing myself to be that and seeing the potential in being a, a mixed racial child, having this potential of every situation, I can react differently to it. It's not like I, you know, like I can choose if I want to react German or Chinese or Ecuadorian to a situation. And that's wonderful because it gives me this room of possibilities. I would even say that I have a fourth um, uh, culture inside of me and that's me. That's my soul. That's like my deepest, deepest me. Well, anyhow, but those are like th those are the things that I learned from that. And last year when I went to Hawaii, I had my heart opening, which means for myself that I was able or now I am able to look into the depths of my heart, 
the depths of my soul and for me I know now what I want and where I want to go and what my potential is and what my um how do you say what my calling is my calling is basically this on an energetic level working energetically but also like through my voice like I'm doing right now with the podcasts and and with the meditations that I do um helping people motivating you guys and giving you inspiration <clears throat> to uh, to find your own way, to find your things, to find the courage to change things and to do things. So um, that's why I've been in this process and that's the, this is the reason why I'm doing this podcast series uh, episode today because now I'm able, like, the things are setting themselves in place and I need to, I need to talk to you about it because I want to bring you into the process. Because after Hawaii, um, I realized I wanted to do that. I want to like speak to you guys. That's why I have this podcast. And I'm thankful to everyone who listens. And um, on one hand. And then on the other hand, I wanted to tell you. Um, because another thing that I realized with this heart opening was that I'm done. I did everything I came to do in this 20 years here in Germany. And I'm ready to move on. And moving on means for me that I'm uh, really like selling all my things and I'm like changing my whole apartment. I'm making it as small as my luggage. So I'm going to have one bag where everything is going to fit. All my things that I own are going to be in there. And um, I want to move on. I'm going to my cousin's wedding in Florida in November and from there I'm heading down to Nicaragua and don't ask me why it's Nicaragua and not Ecuador because I would have thought because of my family that I won't want to go to Ecuador but somehow something kept me away from it and it feels like I need to go to Nicaragua. I don't know why I don't know what's going to be waiting there for me but whatever it is I'm just going to go there and um so yeah, and I wanted to take you with me in this process of letting go of 20 years of Germany, which is not easy for me. Um, or let's, no, it's not not easy. The The weird thing is once I take the decision, it's it's there. But until I do that, it was very interesting for me to see like in the beginning, I was like, oh no, I'm keeping the apartment like for the six months. And, um, you know, I want to I wanna have them just in case it, when I come back so that I have a space when I come back and then I realized I don't want to I want I want to like really make a cut and leave and and I want to go and um but then I felt bad for my friends because I didn't want them to to feel bad um or reject it because I'm not leaving because I don't like them anymore I'm leaving because I feel like my process is taking me somewhere else because the ocean's calling me you know and that was an interesting process and then I have this process with my mom that at first I was like oh I need to I want her to accept my reasons and I want her to accept me leaving um, until I realized that she's just afraid for myself. Of course, I mean, it's it's not something very easy to do to just like, you know, take your things and leave. Um, but I'm doing it. And what I find, what, what for me was interesting to like realize seeing the love my mom has for me and then realizing how why she's afraid because it was basically because she, if you don't know things like she was she was afraid like how am I going to earn money you know how am I going to live and the thing is I'm going to live through an online business that I'm setting up right now so what I did was explain it to her a little bit more so and and I'm taking her with me as well like I'm doing with you guys I'm taking her in the process with me um of the whole thing what I'm doing because I have two big projects now in the summer um, I'm sorry that it is, that it is in German for now um, because I feel like it's something that I owe myself to do for Germany you know like I'm setting up an online conference um, or an online summit um, until 
uh, end of August and I'm setting up a training for a healer. Um, also hoping until August, September, November, something like that. I'm, it's going to happen before I leave. And that's, that's, so I was explaining to her what I'm going to do with that and how that's going to generate income for me. Because nowadays, that's, a, that's another thing that I was telling her. 20 years ago when I came to Germany, internet was so bad that um, the only thing I was possible that I had as possibility to to communicate with my family was to go to an internet cafe in the in the middle of the city and take that opportunity to talk to my mom or my dad. And nowadays, I mean, everyone has a phone. You have internet everywhere. So I'm going to head down there. The first thing I'm going to do is get a SIM card and text my people. And if uh, for whatever reason I want to talk to them, I'm going to be able to just pick up the phone and call them. And that's something that has changed in 20 years. So that makes moving a lot easier. And on the other hand, that also makes me having a job online way easier to support myself. And so that's that's uh, that's basically what I wanted to tell you because now I'm able, I, I, I quit my job um, that I have just recently last week and I'm going to be leaving there in September in for September because I wanted to have October to you know like let go and um, get the apartment ready to leave and yeah and that's also one of the reasons I'm really really sorry for those of you who have been participating in the spirit energy circles I'm going to try to have them every now and then, but because I have to concentrate all my energy on the summit and on the training that I'm building up right now, I'm going to probably have to uh, lower a little bit the um, spirit energy circles as well. And because I prefer to have the podcast running to take you with me on this process. The good thing is for you to know, <laughs> just in case you are interested, um, the same thing that I'm doing right now in German, I'm going to start doing in English once I, um, I'm settled in Nicaragua because I feel like I want to do, I, I want to share all the knowledge that I have learned for myself with my shamanic teacher, with the energy healing work, with the Hawaiian philosophy, all those things that I have learned, I want to give you the opportunity to be able to learn them as well because I believe everyone can learn them if you're open to it and the thing is I want to give you all the tools that I have and then you can decide which which of those tools fit you best and which of those tools are um, going to be able to help you. So I hope you can have uh, um, a, a, a compassion with me and patient with me um, and that I'm going to have less spirit energy circles in the next couple of months because of that, because I, I, I'd like to concentrate on this first. And once I'm done again with those in Germany, I'm going to start doing them in English as well, because I believe that uh, what I'm building up right now is going to help a lot of people with the changes and with everything they're going through. So yeah, I wanted to update you on this. Um, I hope it's okay. I hope I can um, help you and motivate you with my story. So if you have any questions or comments, just send me an email. And uh, I'd like to um, connect with you guys and keep you posted on these things, on this change that is going through my life. And maybe, maybe I can motivate you or inspire you to make your own changes to find the courage for yourself to make the changes so yeah that's it for me for now i know today was a very long podcast um i'm wishing you a great weekend have a great time and uh a blessed next week and i'm looking forward to talk some more next week with you sending you out a big hug aloha mahalo everyone bye Thanks a lot for tuning in again. I hope you were able to get some good takeaways for yourself. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and leave a review. And if you'd like to receive some more inspirational information, sign up to Tita May's Weekly Inspirations. You can find the link on my website, titameola.com. 
I'm looking forward to inspire you some more. And until then, aloha mahalo, e ho'o mai kai kako, e ahui ho.